Jay Spiller. We will open it to questions whenever y'all are ready. Fire away. Hey, CJ. Scott Kiefer with the Greenville News here. Uh, have, have you adapted to uh, people calling you Coach Spiller yet? Uh, I'm still getting adjusted to that. Uh, I've been in it now for, I guess you say, almost over a little over a month now. And uh, you hear the players uh, calling saying Coach, Coach Spiller. Uh, it, it, take, it took some time to get adjusted to it, but, you know, I kind of just throw it back to my time when I kind of volunteered over at uh, Liberty High School and helped out with their track uh, program. And, you know, so those kids was already calling me Coach Spiller. So it's, it's, not, it's not a foreign language to me, but it still takes some time to get adjusted to it. But uh, I know it'll come over, over time. I, I got a little out-of-the-box question for you. You know, a lot of schools have been adopted in recent years to enhance safety on kickoffs but they've also reduced the number of kickoff returns. I was just wondering, you know, given your history as a prolific kick returner during your playing days, you know, how do you feel about the reduced opportunities for what can, what many people consider one of the most exciting plays in football? Yeah, well, I mean, the game that changed since I, uh, since I last played, and, you know, so, you know, teams are not able to get the ball on the 25 yard line. So for, you know, as a, as a team, if you feel more comfortable with your offense starting at the 25 yard line than at the, you know, 10 yard line or the 15 yard line. Most teams are going to do the fair catch to get their offense a chance to, to drive the ball down the field. So, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's sad to see that it's, it's not as many as return, but at the same time, you definitely like to see the, the health and the safety of, of the players. Um, and, but that just goes to teaching, uh, you know, with, with coaches teaching the proper technique and you know, making sure that guys have their heads up. Uh, you know, and they did a great job of taking away the wall or the three man, I guess, say three man uh, wall that. Normally, that uh, return teams have. So, you know, it, it's, it's sad to see the goal, but, you know, if you think, you know, that you tell guys if you get an opportunity to return one, make sure that you make the most of it because they don't come very often. Hey, Coach Thank Trevor, you, CJ. Trevor, Trevor, Trevor Gross from CUTargets.com here. Um, how did you get the news a couple months ago that, that you were voted into the Hall of Fame? And how special was that moment for you? Oh, it was an awesome moment. Uh, you know, uh, Coach Sweeney. Uh, I would just happen to be uh, cleaning up a closet, doing some stuff, and he called me. And, um, you know, he was kind of you – know, I really didn't know what he was calling about, uh, honestly. And then uh, he was kind of giving his his whole spill to both uh, – me and my wife was standing right there beside me. So he was saying, you know, how I became his you know his first time, big time recruit and, you know, uh, his first uh, draft pick and then the first Pro Bowl. And then he was like, now, nah, uh, CJ, you're my first uh, Hall of Famer. And, I honestly, I was definitely shocked. Uh, you know, last uh, the year before, I was, that was my first year of eligibility on the list. And, you know, as a as an individual, you really don't think too much of those things. You know, you you very honored and appreciative to even be mentioned to be on that list, to even be thinking about going into it. But then when it actually happened that you got elected to get uh, to go into the College Football Hall of Fame, it, to me, it still hasn't even sunk in, and still really hasn't hit me, just because I've been so locked in to trying to get my guys here. Uh, ready to go uh, throughout the spring. So, but once that time comes and we have the celebration, I'm pretty sure all the self reflection will come back to me. And, you know, uh, like I told a lot of people, it wasn't just a one man thing. It took a lot of people, a lot of hard work from a lot of individuals to get me to that point. You know, all my teammates, uh, my coaches, uh, my training staff, uh, you know, my, my friends. So it, it, it's a it's a group uh, effort, but you know, obviously. You know, my name's going in there, but, you know, like I told everybody, everybody's name uh, is attached to this. CJ, hey, CJ, this, this is, is Will from the Clemson Insider. wanted to ask you um, about the two freshmen running back. How, how are they looking? And, you know, uh, how, how different is that for you, you know, remembering when you were a freshman coming in? And, and how do you try to help those two guys out? Uh, both Will and Phil have looked great so far. Uh, you know, you, you expect them to come in and, you know, be just freshmen. You know, they're going to have mistakes along the way. It's a new system. Uh, you know, for Will, you know, he, he didn't have a chance to play uh, high school ball. So, you know, you have to take that into account that he, he hasn't played, you know, in over a year. So you have to just kind of just be careful with that to make sure that he comes along properly. Uh, Phil, you know, he's, he done looked awesome. You know, good as advertised. You know, uh, you know they kind of uh, remind you of that, uh, I guess you said, oh, uh, James Davidson, uh, myself, uh, but but you don't want to put that type of pressure on. The thing that I tell both of those guys is that be yourself, you know, be who you are. You know, don't worry about, you know, these high expectations that other people have on you. Just go out there and just be the best version of yourself. You know, don't try to be nobody else. And both of those guys have done a, a tremendous job of that uh, throughout this spring so far.
CJ, it's uh, Mark Gaughan from the Buffalo News. Greetings from Buffalo. Uh, just uh, two questions. Uh, two questions. Just what do you uh, think? Do you have any doubts about Travis Etienne's uh, transition to the NFL? And what do you think will make him uh, successful? And then the second question is, uh, you know, ever, like every year, there's been a lot of talk about are running backs worth taking in the first round, given the depth of the position? As a former pro bowler, just where do you stand on that? Oh, well, I think if that's your first question. I think Travis Etienne going to trans, uh, transition to the NFL. Uh, I don't want to say easy, but I don't think it's going to be overbearing for him. Uh, for one, he's such a humble individual. Uh, he's the total package. To me, he's the best running back coming out of the draft. Uh, he can do it all. You know, he can catch the ball. He can run between the tackles. Uh, if you need him in the return game, he can do that. He's just one of those individuals that when he gets the ball in his hands, there's something special is going to happen. Uh, and then think the most most uh, thing that you like about him that he's very doable. You know he's going to be available on Sunday, so that won't be a question mark. Uh, so I'm I'm excited to see where he lands. Um, and then you know, as far as your second question, which, you know that question always come up every year uh, in the Buffalo area about you know do they need to take another guy? Uh, you know the thing that you know that I always learned from uh, Coach Buddy Nix, the GM that was there um, when I was in Buffalo, is that hey you take the best guy that's available. And I love that mindset that he had. It doesn't matter. You're trying to get your football team better, and you know, and if your guy, if your guy having to be on the board when your time comes to pick, then you take that guy. Uh, sometimes teams do it goes by uh, by knees, but you know, Coach uh, Nix, his mindset was always you take the, the best available guy because I'm pretty sure a lot of people uh, probably didn't agree with the pick when uh, Buffalo chose me when you had Marshawn Lynch and Fred Jackson there, but he felt like I was uh, the best guy uh, when they got time when it came time for Buffalo to pick and. And that's why they uh, turned in the car. So I'm uh, be fair for grateful uh, for that. DJ, why, why was now the right time for you to become a coach? And, and just what's it like taking this next step um, in your career? Uh, oh, I mean, uh, I just knew, uh, you know, I had, like I said, I had been volunteering at a local high school uh, over at Liberty. And then just, you know, and then, you know, spent this last year, uh, been able, been an unpaid graduate, uh, just sitting back and just watching how things are done from a different lens. And I just knew that this was my calling. You know, some people say, you know, this is their job. To me, this is my calling. You know, I kind of got that itch when I was helping out, you know, those uh, high school students. And, you know, and that's kind of where it started from. Uh, I didn't know how quickly it would come, uh, you know, and, you know, and, that, and, you know, so you just really just pray on it. And, but I was prepared. I was always preparing myself for when that time does come. Uh, but there's still some things that I will learn along the way. Uh, I'm not going to sit here and say I know everything uh, because I'm new to it. Uh, but I think last year kind of gave me a jump start of, of what to expect and, and being able to sit in Coach uh, Tony, uh, Coach Elliott room and see how he commands the room, how he runs the room, uh, how he engaged with the, with, with the guys. It gave, kind of gave me a first glimpse of, of what it would take to, to be successful. So uh, I'm always going to be grateful for Coach Elliott for even allowing me to even sit in uh, in his meetings uh, because we know, all know that sometimes that doesn't happen everywhere uh, just because, you know, some guys might feel, you know, pressured or might feel, like you're looking over their shoulders, but you know, Coach uh, Elliott was very gracious enough, and you know, he always asked me questions. Always told me if I had any concerns, or anything that you know that I didn't know to ask him. So to be able to do that for a full year kind of gave me a jump start on how to handle certain things. What was the biggest thing you feel like you learned during that year? Was it, was it the meeting room, or was there something else that you feel like was your biggest takeaway? Just the details of, of the, the position, uh, even though I played it, the details of it, uh, the details of the play, each and every play, not just knowing what your job is. Uh, Coach Ellis is a very de uh, detail-oriented individual, and, you know, he did a great job of making sure that guys knew uh, why they need to be in certain spots. And then he did an awesome job of just knowing how to manage each and every player because each and every player is different. So you got to, as a coach, you have to be able to, you have to understand that for one, and then how can you help those individuals along the way to become a better version of themselves? So he, he to me, he mastered that, of knowing how to handle each and every person, each and every personality that was in that room. CJ, this is Reggie at WLTX in Columbia. Did you take any, do you take anything from your playing career in the NFL to this new gig that you have now? Uh, without a doubt, you know, all the coaches that I'd have had, you know, sitting in different meeting rooms, you, you always take something away and, and try to, you know, put that into what you want to do. Uh, so I definitely, the things that I'd have learned, you know, uh, while I was able to play at the highest level, I definitely take that into account and I, and I try to apply it here. Uh, 
uh, uh, to the guys, uh, you know. And then, you know, like I say, last year, being able to sit in on Coach Elliott meeting, you know, I, I, I was able to take away a lot of stuff that he that he done uh, because you know these guys have been uh, in this system over, you know, some of them over three, four years. So you kind of just take you know what he done and just try to make it better. Uh, and then you kind of, and then at the end of the day, you have to just be yourself. You know, I can't come out here and try to be anybody else. I just have to come out here and just be myself and and, and be the best version of me. Hey, CJ, hey. Um, the recruiting aspect of it, I guess that's maybe one of the newer parts of it. Um, how has that gone so far for you? And, and where do you feel like you're a, do you feel like you're able to bring a unique aspect just because you did have such a successful career at Clemson? Uh, well, I think you said your name was Grace. So uh, to answer the first one, I think I'm Anna, uh, but recruiting I think we're aspect is, <laughs> are you say Hannah, oh, Hannah, uh, I'm sorry, I couldn't, it was kind of going out, but to answer it, I think uh, when it comes to recruiting, me being able to go through it, obviously as a player in high school, you kind of know what it, what to expect. You know, obviously that changed since I've been in high school, but it's still, to me, recruiting is about relationships. You know, can you go build a relationship with an individual? You know, and I'm a huge individual that values relationship uh, to the utmost. So it's all about just building that relationship with a, with a young man and his family, letting them get to know you, you get to know them. And then just over time, that stuff, you know, it'll take care of itself. So, you know, there's certain rules and stuff that you that you can do and you can't do that I didn't know uh, as a recruit, but now you know it as a recruiter. So there's certain stuff that, you know, I have to, you know, make sure that I'm doing it, you know, the proper way uh, to make sure that, you know, you're not doing nothing uh, that's going to bring uh, any, um, any uh, I guess, uh, uh, negativity uh, to a program. So, you know, that, that, that just goes to, you know, uh, to just making sure I'm asking the right question, I guess you can say, uh, with guys that have been in, in this position before. You know, we got a lot of uh, veteran coaches on our team that you can go and ask for help. You know, so I'm always going to go and ask questions, you know, how they did certain things. Because like you say, I only know it just from a recruit standpoint. Now I'm on the other side. Uh, so I'm always asking questions, with, you know, how they handled certain situations, you know, how did they, you know, conduct themselves going into schools and, but at the end of the day, it's still going to be a learning curve, you know, because you know, obviously with COVID, we weren't able to get out on the road this year. So I, I didn't act exactly get, experience that part, but I still was able to, you know, um, you know try to build a relationship with, with guys. Hey, CJ, this is David Hood. Hope you're doing all right, man. How you doing, David? Doing good, man. Listen, when did Coach Sweeney, you know, you've been around the program for several years now. You've been to the practices. When did Coach Sweeney, ask you the first time, hey, would you ever like to do this? Would you like to be a coach? And then uh, kind of how did that conversation go, you know, when he decided to offer you the job? Uh, to be honest, David, I, I honestly, I mean, I think we always just talked about it every time we, you know, uh, got uh, amongst each other. You know, uh, even while I was playing, you know, one thing we always done uh, right before I went off the training camp, you know, we'll always come and have like a, you know, I guess you say father-son type uh uh, conversation, you know, things that he feel like I should uh, do better uh, as an individual, things I can do to improve as a player. And then, you know, um, you know, as I was getting later into my career, you know, it was always, you know, hey, if you ever want to, you know, get into this, just let me know. Uh, but he never pressured me, you know, it was always about, you know, when that time is right, you just, uh, you just come and we'll talk about it and we'll, and we'll evaluate and we'll just go from there. So uh, once I was done playing, uh, last year spending the year it kind of gave me that like this is what I truly want to do so I'm like I said I'm grateful that he has allowed me to uh come in last year and just kind of see if this is truly something that I want to do because some guys you think you want to do it but you truly don't know until you kind of get into it so um and then you know this press year you know we have some changes um and you know we was able to uh, sit down and hey if you if you think you're ready then let, let's do it and you know I was prepared you know I, that's the thing it's a to me, it's a difference between being ready and being prepared. You know, everybody's ready, right? But, you know, it takes a special individual to be prepared. So I was prepared, like I said, and, and like I said, I'm still learning, but I'm gonna be ready. I'm, I'm, a, I'm gonna be excited, I'm gonna be ready to go. CJ, hey, CJ this he is ain't Bill ready. Again. He ain't ready, he ain't ready. <laughs> hey, hey, CJ, this is Will again. I was curious to, um, what, has anything caught you by surprise that you really weren't expecting uh, as a coach?
Hey, CJ, did you hear me? That we lost you there, yeah, yeah, can you repeat that again where you kind of cut out on me? Yeah, I was asking, is there anything that caught you by surprise uh, now that you're a coach that you weren't expecting? Um, to be honest, uh, I mean, I think last year kind of just gave me an advantage, to be honest, to answer that question for you, Will. Uh, just, you know, I think if this is my first year coming in and just seeing the, the hours that the, these coaches put in, I think that would have been a surprise for me. But I think being able to spend a full season uh, as an unpaid graduate assistant, I think that kind of gave me a jump start to kind of what to expect. Um, but I mean, you, but I think the surprising is just, you know, how detailed sitting in on the offensive staff meets and the game planning and going over the scripts and getting practice ready. I think that was, uh, I think the biggest surprise, I guess you can say is that, you know, these as coaches, you put in a lot of time to make sure that you can get out there and, and rep as many plays as you can uh, to give your give your guys a chance to be successful. So I guess you can say that would probably be the, the biggest surprise that I had. And then uh, just making sure that you're just managing time, really, honestly, because, you know, you have, a, you have them to put in the script. You have them to make sure that you're ready for your individual drills. You have them to, you know, make sure that you're ready to go in the install. So it just, you know, just little things like that that you just really don't really think about as a player. Then when you get on this other side, you realize that, man, these guys truly put in a, a ton of time to, to give uh, these players a chance to go out and be successful. Hey, Coach, this covers. is Grace from The Athletic. Um, how would you just evaluate the pecking order in your room right now? Um, well, to be honest with you, Grace, I really haven't, you know, sat down and said, hey, this is guy uh, is, is the number one starter, you know, because it's the spring. So it's the, this is a evaluation standpoint right now. You know, each and every guy does something differently. And on this, it's my job to make sure that I'm, I'm putting those guys in there to, to be successful. Um, you know, and, and it's been a it's been a very healthy competition. I think this uh, these guys they going out and competing each and every day. Uh, they understand that you know each and every one of them brings something totally different uh, to the football team, but they all gonna help us uh, be successful. You know, once you understand that as a player, you get better as a player. So uh, I wouldn't say that you know we have just you know a pecking order as a who. As in, you know, all right, this guy's on the depth chart as number one guy, and this guy's number two. I think, you know, I can put any of those guys in there, and they can, they'll be ready to go and play. Um, but you know, we still have a long way to go until we have to come out. I guess you say with uh, official uh, depth chart. But you know, that's that's the beauty of this sport. You know, all the guys in that room know that somebody got to run out there first. You know, and then <laughs> and then somebody has to be a, some guys have to be backups. You know, but you know, the thing I always tell the guys is that. You're always one play away from being the starter. So, you know, that's the mindset that I always had as a player. And that's what I want to instill into these guys is that, you know, this game here, you always one play away from being a starter. So don't look at it just because you're a backup that you don't have the chance to be a starter because you just never know what can happen in the practice, what can happen in the game. Uh, so if you don't have that mindset, then you'll, you'll never be ready to be a starter because you just never know what can take place. Coach, I guess regardless. CJ, hey, it's Josh from, from Charleston here. Uh, just to follow up on that, um, Lynn Jay's a guy with, you know, among the most experienced in the room. Um, what, will you, what would you want to see for him, from him um, for him to kind of claim that number one spot? Uh, well, I mean, Lynn Jay, he's a phenomenal player. You know, obviously, you know, he had a great running back that was in front of him uh, in Travis Etienne, but hopefully he was able to uh, take away some of the stuff that Travis done from uh, the way that he prepared himself, the way that he took care of his body. You know the, the the leader that Travis was. You know, uh, so hopefully he was able to take that away, and, and that's what you want as you get older and older into this program. You want to start being that leader, that that accountability, that people that can really uh, trust you. So I'm just looking forward to Lindy just taking his game to a whole new level. Uh, he has, like I say, he has the talent. Uh, just now, just time. Now it's time for him just to go out there and just do it. Um, and that just comes through practice, through reps. You know, learn, learning how to practice. You know, uh, he practices hard, but then not, all right, can you practice smart? So it, there's different things uh, that that, uh, that I'm wanting to see from Lynn Jay. Um, but those are things that I'll keep, you know, between me and Lynn Jay uh, as we continue to go through the spring. Coach, when you played, it was basically you and James Davis or, or you and Andre Ellington carrying most of the load. How different is the depth at this position now? Um, and how much of a challenge is it uh, managing the, the carries between so many guys with so much talent? Uh, well, I mean, the game is different uh, compared to when I played, you know, with those guys. You know, now, you know, teams are doing hurry up. So, you know, a lot of teams are trying to get in a lot of plays. And to me, you need you need a guy that's, you know, that's always fresh. So that's that comes to, you know, comes back on my responsibility to make sure that I have 
a guy that's out there that's fresh, that's that's prepared, um, and that knows what he's doing. Um, and you know, and you want to have depth because uh, it goes back to what I just said is that you know you never know when when it's going to be your time to go out there and, and take maybe the buck blow. Uh, but you know, every guy in my room should have the, the mindset that they are a starter. Uh, you know, obviously you can only play with eleven, uh, so you know, in our position, you know, we can only have one. You know, compared to other positions where you know, take for instance the receiver position. You can have three that go out there, but for us, we can only have one. Um, but I want those guys to also understand that, hey, you might not be the first one, but you're still considered a starter, you know, because, you know, you never know. So you have to be ready to go. You have to be in tune with the game. You have to be in tune with what's going on. Uh, so, you know, I, I have to make sure I have a, do a great job and make sure I'm uh, getting the guys ready to do that. CJ, this is Matt again. I know you said you, you feel like this is your calling. Just why do you feel like that? And what do you hope to, to bring to guys other than – Helping them get better as players. Oh well, I mean, you just want to have an impact on on young men's lives. You know, you want to see them go off and, and be successful in anything. You know, uh, I think too many times when people say you want to see them go off successful, they think of the professional, or the NFL level. To me, it's, it's life. Uh, you know, how can you have an impact? How can you inspire uh, others around you? You know, and so with, throughout my experiences that I've been able to have uh, throughout life, I'm able to uh, share some of that knowledge. You know, what is it going to gain me to, to keep all that knowledge and the wisdom that I'd have been able to uh, experience over my lifetime and not share with these guys? You know, so, you know, that's why I say it's a calling because, you know, I just love seeing young, young men in this case go out and be successful in life. And, you know, what what more, uh, how proud can you more be when you have a, a, one of your guys come back, you know, 10, 15 years now and appreciate the things that you instilled in him, instilled in him outside of just football? You know, so it's not just about football here at Clemson, you know, it's about life. Uh, you know, how are we preparing you for life? You know, because one day we all know that you're going to get that curtain call on football, but in life is still going to go on. Now, are you going to be prepared or what are you going to take away from that? And that's where it comes, that's where my job comes in to make sure that you're prepared and you can be ready to take on life. CJ, what is it about uh, Clemson that, sorry, Larry, go ahead. No, you go ahead, Matt. I'm sorry. Okay. I was just going to ask, what is it about Clemson that, you know, you, you came here, you, you played here, you came back afterwards, and now you wanted to come have your career here as well? Just what is it about Clemson that, that led you to do that? Oh, well, Matt, is you know, Clemson always been special to me. You know, I always said that, you know, I always wanted to be close to this university uh, in some capacity. Uh, and it just led to coaching. You know, I always knew I wanted to stay involved uh, with this university uh, because when I signed that letter of intent, Back in, uh, I guess you'd say, in the spring or the winter of uh, 2006, it was a lifetime commitment. It wasn't just, uh, you know, come here four years, do what I need to do, and then never be involved. You know, I, so I always knew, uh, even while I was playing, that, you know, once I was done, that Clemson was going to be my home. Uh, and then, uh, you know, when, when I got done playing, you know, I was able to uh, to be able to accomplish that. So, you know, that's, that's why I think this place is just so special. I think it's the people that's here. You know, it reminds me so much of my hometown in uh, Lake Butler, Florida, uh, just a small town, just family oriented. Uh, and, that, and that's what I want. Um, and, you know, and this, and this is what this place provides. And, you know, you come and you get to work with great people, uh, with, with our head coach, uh, like Coach Sweeney, that, 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 that values family, uh, that makes sure that you spend family time. A lot of places don't have that, you know, so to be able to do that here at Clemson, man, that, that, that's special to me. That, that means a lot. That means that, is, that, that we value more than just, wins and losses, you know, so, uh, so I'm, I'm forever grateful uh, to be able to be uh, living here in this area and, and for the people, uh, you know, this is, uh, th these people here are special. CJ, Larry Williams here. Uh, I think when we were talking about a year ago, you were sort of reflecting on your role with Ipte and sort of the awkwardness maybe of going to big money boosters homes and asking them for large sums of money how much more in your wheelhouse is selling recruits on playing for Clemson and, and how much did that experience maybe before you took the job sort of convince you that this was your calling finally well I mean be honest with you Larry I mean for one I, uh, I never really had to go into somebody's house and ask them for money you know I think that would have been a, a, a very interesting uh, conversation but I, if they would ask me to do it I would have done it and it's really just going about just going to someone's homes and just being real. You know, and the thing about here at Clemson is that, you know, we don't have to go into a kid's home and, and give them this false narrative. You know, uh, we have great facilities. We have great people here. 
you know, academics. We're going to value, you know, uh, number one thing in this program is graduation. You know, so if you come to Clemson, you know, that's going to be top priority is you to graduate. Uh, so, you know, and, and for me, I can go into a home and say and attest to that because I'm a graduate. Uh, so uh, going to somebody's home is, is, is not going to be a difficult task. You know, obviously it'd be different uh, just being on the other side of it. But like I said earlier, you just go, just about just going in there and just being myself, being who I am uh, and just building that relationship with someone. I can't go in there and fake it because, you know, these kids now, this generation, they, they'll sense that. You know, I sensed it when I got recruited. You know, I knew who, I knew what coaches was being real with me and what coaches just wanted me just to come there. And, you know, and that, that's why I chose to come to Clemson because I felt like Coach Sweeney was the only one that was really just truly being real with me, honestly. You know, he, he didn't just talk about football with me all the time. It was about life. You know, he, he knew I was having a daughter coming out of high school. You know, he wanted to know, all right, how are you going to be a father? You know, what are the things that, that you're going to do? You know, with him being a father, he, he was able to help me with that. So, you know, that's the thing about, you know, just going into a recruit, just all about just going in there, just being yourself, being who you are, uh, you know, and not giving this false narrative of, uh, about a program. You know, we, we have the stuff to back up what we're saying. I'm sorry if you've already been asked this earlier, but when you got the job last year, in your mind, were you thinking it'd be several years before you became a – a full-time head coach, I mean, that's a pretty quick <laughs> uh, and extraordinary turnaround. Well, I mean, honestly, uh, honestly, I really didn't know how quickly it would come. You know, I was just, you know, uh, if it came later, it came later. Uh, but, you know, everything's, you know, I hate the, you know, I don't want to sound too churchy, but, you know, everything's on God's time. You know, and the, and the time it just happened to be quicker than later, you know. But I was willing to, to wait as long as I needed to wait until the opportunity came. Uh, and it just presented itself a whole lot quicker uh, than, you know, than, you know, I guess, than what people probably was expecting. So, you know, uh, but, you know, I don't take that thing lightly. Uh, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm grateful uh, for the opportunity. Um, and, that, and I have a responsibility to do uh, as a coach. Thanks, hey, CJ. Trevor, Can you Trevor, yeah. Go ahead. Can you describe Kobe Pace's running style and just what you've seen from him this spring and maybe where the areas that he needs to grow that you'd like to see him grow the most between now and the fall? Well, I mean, this is, you know, Kobe's a sophomore, so this is second year in the system. You know, he kind of know it a little better than what he did his freshman year. And, you know, uh, his running style uh, is very unique. I guess you can, you know, if you want to compare it to somebody, you can kind of say kind of like that that Nick Chubb, I guess you can say type of comparison. You know, he's a, he's a big back, but he has speed as well. He has power, so. You know, uh, you know, I've been very pleased with what he what he's done so far here in spring. He still has a long way to go, um, but you can see that he done took the strides from year one to year two. And, and, and to me, uh, that's all. That's what you always want to see as a coach. You know, that's something that you know uh, on the NFL. That's what guys always want to see. How do you make that jump from year one to year two? And he done made a, a tremendous jump so far. So, but he has to continue to work. He knows that uh, that he has to continue to work on his game, but he. He's been uh, he's been good so far uh, this spring. Coach, uh, it's Trevor again. Speaking of Nick Chubb, I don't think you got, ever got a chance to play against Georgia in your playing career. Um, how cool will it be to, to go against those guys in the season opener and your first game as a position coach? Oh, well, I mean, it's, I mean, you, you want to play against the best, you know, uh, you know, and they they own us. Uh, they the first team that we have to play against, and you know, we're going to make sure that we uh, doing everything that we can to be prepared for those guys. Uh, come September, um, uh, like I said, I never played against Georgia, uh, so it'll be exciting. I'm pretty sure we got a lot of Georgia guys on our team. I'm pretty sure they'll be excited. You know, particularly in my room, we got a couple guys from Georgia, so I know they'll be excited. But you know, the thing I have to tell them is, you know, don't get caught up to the emotions. A game still has to be played. You know, because I know what it's like to go against your home, your home state team. So you know, uh, you know, the guys, they'll, I'm pretty sure they'll be looking forward to it. Uh, right now, they're just trying to get, you know, uh, make it through this spring, get to the spring game, and. And, and continue to have fun with their brothers here. But, you know, when that time comes, and uh, we, we really dial into, you know, what Georgia uh, presents. Uh, I'm pretty sure our guys will be ready. Hey, CJ, this is Brad from Clemson SI, WCCP. Uh, you talked about this being your calling, being a coach. How far do you want to go with this? What are your career aspirations? You want to be head coach? You want to be in the NFL, college? What do you want to do with this? Oh, I'm, I'm going to just take it one day at a time, honestly. You you don't want to sit out here and, you know, I want to sit here and jump the gun and say, hey, I want to be this, I want to be that. You know, uh, I'm just taking it one day at a time. And, you know, wherever this 
this path leads, this journey leads, that's where it leads and I'll be ready to go. But you know, right now for me, I'm just trying to learn how, how can I be the best uh, position running back coach that I can be. You know, obviously, you know, you know, people think since you played the position, you just automatically just going to be great at it, you know, and I understand that. But, you know, there's still a lot of things that I have to learn from a coaching standpoint. So, you know, I, I don't want to jump the gun ahead and start thinking about other things. I'm just trying to think about, you know, how can I be the best version of myself right now in this moment to give my guys the best opportunity to go out and be successful? Uh, but, I, I mean, that is a great question. And, you know, you do have dreams about other things. But at the moment, I really honestly haven't really thought about you know, how far I want this thing to go. Honestly, I've just been taking it one day at a time and I'm gonna just I'm gonna continue to just do that. Hey, CJ. Go ahead. Hey, thanks, man. Um, it's Mark from WIFF. Earlier this spring, Dabo said, even back to your days as a player, you were really invested in understanding the why behind everything that it was that you were doing. Where does that hunger to to understand everything and that hunger for knowledge come from? Uh, Mark, it comes from my grandparents, honestly. That's just the way that I was raised up. You know, uh, you know uh, my, my grandparents and my, my mom always told me to, to understand why you're doing something. Don't, don't just be doing anything, just to be doing it. You know, why are you doing this? You know, why you need to study for this test? Well, the reason you need to study for this test is, okay, you want to make a great grade. You're just not going to show up in the classroom. You know, I know I wasn't, you know, I, uh, you know, I was a pretty smart kid, but I wasn't a, a genius, you know, so I know I needed to study. And the reason why, because I want to make great grades. Same thing when it comes to football. Why do, do you play football? Because, you know, it, it teaches you about life, you know, about sacrifice, uh, about uh, determination, uh, humility, you know, uh, responsibility, accountability. You know, that, those are the things that this game teaches, you know, and, you know, but if you want to become great, you know, how do you do that? And why do you do that? Well, it's going to take a lot, a little extra stuff uh, from within. You know, it can always just come from, from coaches. So, I always been one of those self uh, determination type individuals. I, I guess you can say, you know, it didn't take a lot of people uh, for me to go out and, and run stadiums by myself. You know why? Because I knew when I was in Lake Butler, Florida, if I want to have opportunity to go to college, I'm, I was going to have to do stuff that other people weren't willing to do. So that's why I was doing it. Uh, so I guess you can say just from my upbringing, uh, from from the stuff that, that that was instilled into me. Coaches, Trevor again. Um, he, he, Clemson hasn't really had a, a real prolific uh, punt and kick returner since you were a player. Um, are, are there things that you can impart to to the guys now at that that are that are return, returning kicks and punts, or is that the sort of thing? You know, obviously you can't teach speed that you had. You can't teach some of the moves that you had. But are there there's some things about uh, that position that you can impart to these guys now? Yeah, it's the, it's the little things that you can uh, teach these guys, uh, the, uh, the ins and outs of the uh, as being a return man. Um, like you say, you know, we, we have some guys on this team that <clears throat> that's going to be able to do that. Uh, so, you know, I'll be able to, you know, just share my experiences, my knowledge and, you know, what I was thinking as a return man. I think that would, you know, hopefully that would give these guys the advantage uh, to go out there and be successful. So I'm looking forward to it. You know, we've done a great job. And, and I've been sharing that knowledge uh, throughout the spring uh, with these guys. You know, what I was thinking, you know, on certain returns. You know, how did I study, you know, a kickoff team? You know, how did I study a punt team? Uh, so, you know, but it's all about, you know, take a collective group effort. You know, a kick return is all about guys just out there being excited. You know, so it just, it, not, it wasn't just me as the return man. You know, I had guys like DeAndre McDaniel that was on the front line that was, they knew, you know, hey, if I get my block, then I knew we had we had a chance to 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 score a big one. So everybody just has to do their job and have to be excited about it because you know if you have you know guys that's in the back end that can take it the distance, that make those guys' jobs up front a whole lot easier. So uh, I'm gonna continue to share my knowledge uh, with the whole unit. Uh, you know, all right, this is why we do it. This is you know this is what we need to do to be successful. So uh, I'm I'm looking forward to continue to continuing those uh, conversations uh, with the guys. We'll take one or two more for Coach Spiller if you've got them. CJ, what's changed the most since you were at Clemson, right? I mean, they've won a national championship now. I know you guys won an ACC championship when you were there, but I mean, are any little things that have changed that you've picked up on or, or, or shows that it's a more national program even? Uh, well, I mean, I mean, our program that came a long way since, uh, since I've been here. And, you know, uh, Coach that done a tremendous job of, first of all, bringing in the right people. Uh, starts with that, 
uh, people that understand this program, uh, that buys in uh, to, to, to what we're trying to accomplish here uh, as a program. And, you know, and then it just fil filters down to the, to the players, bringing in the right players. You know, I think now, you know, our brand is such a national brand uh, that, you know, people are wanting to come to Clemson compared to, I guess you say that would be the difference from when I was playing, you know, we was, we was trying to get guys here, you know, now, you know, it's, you know, you know, you don't want to, you know, toot your horn, but you know, our brand is, is, is amongst the best uh, out there. It's the best. So, you know, guys, they, they want to come here and see what, 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 what makes this place special. Um, and, you know, you can see it on TV, but once you step here on campus, it, it takes that, um, that take, that take, it takes it to a whole different uh, level. So, um, I would say probably just the, you know, the success of this program. You know, I say that was the difference, and now it's just, you know, our brand is, is, is out there, uh, we, and, and that's what we wanted. You know, and that's the vision that Coach had for our program, is to, to, to put us as, you know, the beacon of light uh, uh, of, of this country of college football, uh, and our guys that bought into that. Is that something you guys talked about when you're at Clemson as a player? Uh, I mean, we always talk about that, you know, as, as a player that you, you, you want to be considered one of the best. You want to be the beacon of light. You want people to model, you know, what you do. And, you know, but, you know, at the same time, it's going to take a lot of hard work, uh, a lot of sacrifice. It's going to take some some bumps and bruises along the way. Uh, but you just all just got to be consistent. And I think that's kind of where our program has been. We've been very consistent uh, over the years. And, you know, and that, and that takes your program to a different level. We'll take one more. Yeah, Coach Sweeney was uh, just a, a young wide receiver coach when he recruited you in, in 2005, 2006. Um, how, how has he changed, do you think, since then? <laughs> well, he still thinks he's a young, a young guy. <laughs> <laughs> nah, Coach has been the same, honestly, uh, since the first time I ever met him. Um, he still, I mean, you think about, you know, he still wearing the same watch that, you know, I, that I always have known him to wear. And he's just such just a just down to earth individual, you know. Uh, you know, you know. Before you know, people always ask me, you know, how is Coach Winnie? Is he? Is it? Is it really real? You know, is it? Is it a show? And I tell him, man, what you see is what you get. You know, with Coach, you know, he, he he's not out here to put on the show, and he understands that. You know, he understands uh, the the job that he has and the responsibility that he's been uh, that he's been given. You know, he doesn't take that lightly, and you know, he. he he is who he is, you know, and, you know, he, he's going to tell you the truth, whether you, whether you want to hear that truth or not, he, he's going to lay it out there to you. Um, and, but then he's going to love you too, you know, so, and, and that's what you want in the head coach. You know, he, he's the same individual uh, day in and day out. There's no, oh, what type of coach we're going to get today. Now with Coach Sweeney, you know what you're going to get on a day in and day out basis. So, you know, I think that's what, that's why he was able to, to able to accomplish this job uh, in 2009 because people gravitated towards him because of who he was as an individual. And, and you know, he's very well respected uh, amongst his peers and then obviously within our program. All right, with that, we'll wrap up Coach Spiller. Uh, for anybody still needing Miles Murphy, he's in room two if you'd like to join us there. Thank you all. Thanks, Coach.